Hello, my name is Christine and I run a vintage shop called Prima Treasures on Etsy. Today I wanted to talk to you about this mirror that I have. Um, and it's a pretty distinctive mirror. Best I can tell, these were made in like the 60s and 70s, maybe, maybe as early as the 50s. It's a little difficult to put a date on these because they're pretty much never marked or signed. Um, I did find one lead in an old eBay archive, uh, but, you know, it's kind of hard to um, decide how much weight to put on someone's memory of how old their item is. But, you know, when that's all you've got to go on, that's all you've got to go on. So anyway, I think they're mid-century in origin, basically. And the thing that I like about them is they're actually uh, fairly high end for vanity decor, vintage vanity decor. There are some pieces that are probably nicer than this, but in terms of what you're likely to run into in a typical middle class house, this is probably the higher end. And essentially they all have the same set of features. So I'll just go over that with you real quick. So you've usually got these gold handles that are kind of I don't know if you can really tell, but they're kind of clamped on. They're not really like made in, uh, but they tend to be kind of added on. And I think they're actually brass, but they look gold. So, you know, they're kind of fancy in that way. Then you've got this, and here's one of the distinguishing characteristics. This trim around it is, um, typically people call it Murano glass. Now, again, because these mirrors are not generally marked, there's no way to be really confident of that. But with as many people have them, you know, I'm willing to go with the crowd on that particular um, aspect of it. So you've got this like twisted rope um, designed to the glass. A lot of times it will have this like, you can see this one has gold flecks kind of blended into it. The other thing that you would typically see if it didn't have gold or clear glass on the, on the trim is sometimes they'll put a ribbon of color through it. So it might be red or blue or green. So there are some examples of this style of mirror where you'd have actual color running through the glass. So there's that, but other than that, the design doesn't tend to deviate. And then at the bottom, you can see we have this large flat mirror acting as the bottom of the tray. And then the other uh, feature, very typical, is you've got this frosted glass scene on the mirror, and it's usually some sort of Victorian influenced um, image with a large tree and then some accents. But this composition of the image is very typical. I think pretty much every one of the mirrors I've seen of this type have had this sort of little, you know, romantic couple Victorian style scene. So, as I said, um, because the mirrors all tend to have this same overall design with only minor deviations in terms of the color of the glass edge, they're pretty easy to spot. And they can run anywhere between $100 and $300. So they do tend to be at the higher price point of what we would consider typical um, vintage vanity decor. I think anything that drifts above 300, we're probably sort of wandering into more of a luxury or collector's territory at that point. But if you spot one of these mirrors at an estate sale, um, don't be surprised if the price on it is fairly high. The larger the mirror is, the more it's going to skew towards that higher end of the price point. So if you had a mirror, that this mirror is probably a good 20, 22 inches across. In fact, I have a little yardstick here we can use just to verify. Yeah, we got about 22 inches, including the handle. So this price point is definitely going to be two to three hundred dollars for something this size because it's arguably a statement piece at this point. But if you have one roughly half that size, something in the 10 to 12 
range, then it would be perfectly reasonable to pay, let's say, 100 ish for that price point. So if you happen, happen to see one out and about, you can kind of use that to gauge whether it's overpriced or not. You can always decide to come back on half price day if you don't like the price they put on it. But it's definitely worth picking up, and it's certainly not the kind of thing where you should expect to see it posted or out, you know, in an estate sale for 5 or $10. I, I can't imagine anybody's really going to have a piece like this and be willing to take 5 or 10 bucks for it. So, anyway, they're very unusual, and to my mind, they're very Hollywood Regency, very glamorous. So, if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in, I would definitely keep your eyes peeled. Or if you know somebody who would love this look, you know, definitely, if you come across one, snap it up for that person. Anyway, I hope you've learned something useful today, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.